flow of the show tonight required us to do a little lineup juggling, so we close with Countdown's number one story. Tonight's worst persons in the world. The bronze to John Gibson of Fox News. Oh, that's right. He got fired from TV. He's on Fix News Radio now. Tells this story. I'm minding my own business at dinner, and suddenly I hear, Gibby. I look up, and there's Phil Griffin, the guy who runs MSNBC. He looks at me, and he says, going left is the right thing to do. I guarantee you he doesn't have a political bone in his body. He was looking for ratings. Well, that's true. It explains why we fired John Gibson. But as usual, if it's a Gibson story, it is a twisted, misremembered, poorly reported one. Griffin came over to say hello to the woman Gibson was dining with, another former MSNBC employee, whereupon Gibson said to Griffin, so you guys went liberal. And Griffin replied, we're not going liberal, we're, liberal. we're going smart. But it was the right thing to do. This kind of bad reporting would be a little more heinous if it weren't for the fact that John doesn't really realize that he never fully recovered after he fell off a horse and hit his head five years ago. The runner-up, comedian Rush Limbaugh, continuing his I hope the president fails crap as a guest on the Manatees program in an exclusive interview. You know, racism in this country is the exclusive province of the left. We're witnessing racism all this week that led up to the inauguration. We're being told that we have to hope he succeeds, that we have to bend over, grab the ankles, bend forward, backward, whichever. Limbaugh also complained that his critics are, quote, not listening or parsing my words. I think we are, actually. And these words fit in with his previous observation that when it came to support from gays or African Americans, quote, Democrats will bend over, grab the ankles, and say, have your way with me. And they also fit in with his previous comment that criticism of the governor of Alaska was pure sexism. She didn't put up with it, and she didn't bend over and let them have their way. Well, I'm parsing his words, and he sure spends an uncomfortable amount of time describing himself or others bending over and grabbing his ankles. But our winner, John Thane, the CEO of Merrill Lynch. Our pal, Aaron Burnett of CNBC, with a little enterprise reporting today that Mr. Thane paid out at least $3 billion in bonuses to his people and spent a million to redesigning his office. A garbage can for just 1400 bucks. Roman shades, 7300 Fabric for the Roman shades, eleven grand. Shades are not sufficient for Mr. Thane. He also had four pairs of curtains for twenty-eight grand. A commode with legs. That's really just a chest of drawers, not a toilet. $35,000. A light fixture for nineteen grand. Two guest chairs for 43000 each. An antique chair for 18000 An antique credenza for 68 large. A mahogany pedestal table for 25 k A very good bargain, what is described kind of mildly here as just table for 5800 And lastly, an area rug for $87,000. The area had better be all of Merrill Lynch's 10281 zip code, and it better cover all the homeless people in the neighborhood, because though Mr. Thane's office redecorations took place early in the year last year, they were, in effect, part paid for by you. His company, Merrill Lynch, was taken over by Bank of America, using at least $20 billion of taxpayer bailout money. Hey, you know what? We want it back! Even though Mr. Thane has today been fired. That's ex-CEO John, why don't you go live in your $1,400 garbage can, Thane, formerly of Merrill Lynch, today's worst person in the world. And that's Countdown for this, the 2,084th day since the previous president declared mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.